Welcome back to Kung Fu Maintenance, where I show you how to make the most likely repairs you'll need to make in your lifetime. If you'd like to get the latest videos, subscribe and then hit the little bell icon right at the subscribe button and it'll notify you of any new videos when they're to released. To get a more for you. realistic effect of what it's actually like in this video, you'll need to turn your heater up to 108 degrees and then sit back and enjoy the show. Definitely had a few rounds with this one before. Friday after five. Six. And we'll pull the disconnect first. And yeah. Check the breakers inside. Everything was okay there. Check the other things inside. Use the disconnect. feels really hot, but you know, it's hot outside, so it's hard to tell. That's kind of the thing about these units is you can't get in as easy. Um, I've definitely had some rounds with this before. This one where I had it, but it was low on three on once, twice, which isn't good. And I, I, try, I searched and searched for a week. I may need to, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, test here. Do a die test. Um, discharge the capacitor. Capacitor holds the charge in it even after the power is disconnected. So 40 slash 5. Nothing was running. The compressor is way hot on the, the fan lid's way hot. The compressor's hot. What I do have is my laser thermometer and I can pretty much tell if it's the uh, oh the motor is 170 degrees compressor is 150 degrees so it's definitely gone out on thermal for sure um, motor is a little easier I could just put some cold water on the motor just says on, I need to go get some ice as well. And probably I'll need to discharge, uh, disconnect and run just the fan to, to speed cool this one down. So if I can disconnect the compressor. Um, with the red run wire. And the yellow with the start wire. And I can speed it up. Also, try to get some ice and put some ice on the top of the fan. Otherwise, that puppy's not going to cool down very fast. Let's see, going down. The fan is purple. That is the common to the fan going up, and then this red one here is going down to the fan. So I would need to disconnect that red and disconnect, and it's just the red that's going to the compressor itself, and disconnect the, the yellow start wire. It goes to the compressor. You guys a little closer. Shot. What I'm talking about, right? Okay. So right here, this red wire goes down to the compressor. This red wire goes to the contactor, to the to the um, to the capacitor from the contactor to the capacitor, and then that common is shared to the fan, and in and then here's the yellow start wire to the compressor. So I need this guy right here. That wire terminal looks, yeah. Anyway, I need that one. And then the yellow start wire. Right there. Okay, I'm gonna position those where they're not gonna touch anything. And then we should be able to run just the fan. 
check my fuses. I'm going to dump more cold water on the fan. So we can try to get that thermal switch to reset. Uh, I'm going to test my fuses here. like we've just gone out on thermal. So now I'm going to start it and see if we can run run that uh, again I'm just going to position this somewhere where it's not definitely not going to touch anything or anybody which would be me. Probably strip this back put a new terminal on there doesn't look good. All right, so now no, it's not going to touch anybody. I'm going to try to reset it. I may need to get ice. So if it doesn't start right away, I'll just pull it real fast. If it starts, then I can remove a lot of air. So here we go. So I need to get ice on the fuel. So I'll be right back with some ice. Get a half full of ice. Okay, got my hat full of ice. Dump it on there so I can get my hat back. That's my shield, man. All right. And this will kind of drip down on the compressor. It's a little secondary. The ice is really sticking to the lid. That's how hot it is. So again, if we can cool down this compressor real fast, then we can get that other deal. Now one thing I didn't check was the contactor to see if we've got continuity across the contactor. But being as hot as we are, I'm pretty much convinced that we do. I'll check that now anyway. So again, take it to an ohms test. Gonna re-discharge the capacitor since we plugged it in. Uh, it acts like a battery and stores the power and it can get you it can bite you and I don't want to be bit especially on Friday okay so testing continuity from the bottom of the fuse or the, the contactor to the top and we're good there so got that checking Wire lead, incoming, incoming wiring. Again, that crispy deal. We discharged it. I'm letting it cool. I can replace that lead while that's going. Alternatively, we could run it straight to the front, kind of like that one is, but. Got nice wire terminals here, and that's going to allow us to kind of get rid of a little of this. You know, sometimes the wire gets degraded a little further back, and we've got so much extra wire here. Why not take it back to a really good spot, start fresh, and crimp on a good, really good connection here? So, that's how I'm going to do it. There we go. You want to make sure you don't lose any strands. It comes a place to build up heat, as you can see here, because it's got heat build up. Anyway, and I'm probably going to fix this one up too, and kind of do the same thing. But here goes crimp on our connection. 
Now this is a really nice tool. This is a, oh, you know, it was a, it's a Gerber, <laughs> but the Gerber's worn off. <laughs> now but, it's uh, a GE, soon to be a G, due yeah. to the company we all start to keep, anyway. which is AGE, as long as we survive. A nice crimp on connection. So it's got a, a, the yellow indicator, yellow and blue for the first spot here. It's a real nice tool. Makes a nice solid crimp. It's not going to go anywhere. Makes a good connection. Doesn't build up heat. And now I'm going to look at this other wire here. And again, this is giving our ice a chance to cool that that fan down. And in turn, once we can run the fan for a little bit, we'll be able to. Yeah, I'm going to start fresh here, even though it's not much room there. That should be enough for us to. What I need to do here. There we go. Nice deal there. Twist our wire. And crimp on our lead. This way we'll have a nice, nice good connection. Nice and solid. So that one can go right here. Now I gotta retighten that wire, or not the wire, but the post, because this particular contactor, it actually holds that contact in place. So made that nice and tight. And this has a couple ports, so it's kind of cool. And get one here. And well, I should have got. Ideally, I would have put the uh, forked portion on this side so I can get under there easier if I ever need to remove it again in the future, but that's okay. Hi. And I actually didn't want to connect it yet. Because we do want to connect this one though. And I do want to put this one in the front anyway. So now I can put it the way that I want it, which was like that. We need that connection to the common so that we can power the fan. But now the start wire for the compressor and the run wire for the compressor both are disconnected so all that's left connected is the common which won't matter because it needs to complete the circuit in order for the compressor to try to run if you had the red wire connected and the black it would try to run but it wouldn't be able to start if you had the start and the black connected it would try to start but it wouldn't be able to run we just sit there and hum so that's why we're disconnecting from the compressor the run wire, the red run wire, and the yellow perm or start wire, yellow start wire. I think on the capacitors they should just call it the start, but anyway, that's another story. So now we're going to see if our fan will run. We got the ice going. And have a bad fan motor because it's had ice on it for a little while, while here. It also may just still be so hot because the compressor is so hot that it can't shed very much heat. So that's the tricky part. I may need to remove the lid and put some ice down on the compressor between the two of them. And the other thing I can do is I can test the um, you know, the incoming voltage to verify we've got what we need. Just going to kind of double check everything. Um, and we could have lost phase on our capacitor, so that's the other thing. We can be overheated and have lost our capacitor. So let's check our capacitor here. So I still got the ice on the compressor and that's good. Pulled the disconnect, now we need to re-discharge because our capacitor. And I'm just going to disconnect everything, all the commons. 
we've already disconnected the start and the fan. There's the brown one here, so now we're all disconnected, except for the hard start kit back here. start kit. Okay, now we can test everything. So, use a microfarad test. Here's the capacitor. I know that. Oh, wow. 0.74. Let's check the fan. 1.96. We got a bad cap. All right. So we should be able to replace this pretty quickly. I've got a 40 slash 5 right here. that after. Okay. It's pretty hot. Okay, this one, common fan and herm. I really don't like putting them upside down. It doesn't doesn't matter, I mean, but it's not my favorite. Way to do it, but this one there's no room, so you gotta do what you gotta do. Also, I sometimes think about trying a different brand. I mean, I have been using the, there's the fan, here's the common. And then we're not going to connect the other run wire or the yellow start wire, but we do need the common for the fan. And then we can also hook up our hard start kit, which was one lead to common and one lead to herm. Here's the common. One thing I'm definitely careful of when working on a unit, that's the loose connection there, so I'm going to take this and squeeze the back. One, one thing I'm careful of when working on a unit is that you still have low voltage on the sides of the contactor, something to be aware of, and when you're perspiring, it can still nab you because your perspiration moisture increases the surface contact of the of electrical current and, and so you still got to watch out for that it is low voltage but it can bite you okay and then here's the start wire for the hard start kit okay there we go we're in there tighten this down just a hair don't want to make that too tight just don't want to go anywhere and then our hard start kit will hang back up here where it was. All right. So now we are ready to run. And we're ready to run just the fan for a little bit to cool down that compressor because I don't think that compressor is going to start as hot as it is. So we're going to start it and let it run for about five minutes. Here it goes, plug it in. Plugging in the disconnect. All right. All right, we got fan. Okay. So I'm just gonna give it about five minutes. We're gonna shed that heat and uh, and kind of show you with the laser thermometer. Uh, da, 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 right here. So our fan temperature, now a nice cool 
84 on the top, but going lower, 110. Down at the compressor, the fan blades are kind of in the way, but I can just feel, you know, the cooler air coming off. So just gonna give it a couple minutes here, get a drink of water, and uh, cool it down, and then we'll plug those in. We should be all set. Unless we're low on Freon, so that'll be the next step if it is, but obviously we have to get it working first. But it's likely just the capacitor failed, although, you know, it can be caused by a low Freon charge, you know, because it would have run in a, in a rough condition, that being low on refrigerant. that run for a second. See how it goes. This one I charged this one the other day. Take out the trash here. It's nice and cold. That's good. It's holding. I did a leak check. I didn't find anything. But it's still monitoring that one. And it just happened to be up here. So. All right, give it a couple minutes and we'll, we'll check it again. Okay, it's only been about another two minutes, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull it, try it. The air coming out feels cooler. It doesn't feel like there's much heat to shed, so. And if it doesn't work out, I'll have to pull it and just wait a little longer. Ooh. Oh, it's because the ice fell off. <laughs> All right. And I'm actually, Show you with the laser thermometer now that we can get a straight shot once the fan stops. I was showing nice and nice and cool right here with the fan going. So we're like 116 on the compressor, 122, 115. Oh, so it's borderline. We'll see. Okay, so now I need to discharge the capacitor again. Yeah. I was telling you, it's like a battery, stores that charge. And then, now we can plug in the yellow start wire. Nice tight connection there. And then this red run wire. A little, looks like a dead spider there. Our nice new wire terminals that should do much better and we're ready to run. All right, well, hopefully, it's not low on free on Friday and you know, blazing sun. All right, here we go. Hi, no compressor. So, we've still got an overheated compressor. I'm gonna need to re, re just pull those. And uh, let it cool down longer. So I'm gonna re-discharge the capacitor again. We're gonna take our yellow start wire back off and take our red run wire back off. And we're gonna let this fan run a little bit longer. So position is somewhere a little safer. Ooh, that holds it out there. Okay. And I need to let it run a little bit longer. We're gonna adjust the fan. Hopefully, we haven't lost our compressor. All right, so we're gonna shed heat. Oh, let's see what time it is. 6.20, I'll give it five minutes. Well, then we'll jump back in at 6.25. We'll see how it goes. Now I can kind of pack up my stuff while that's going. Wire connections. And my trash. It's way hot. And wire strippers. 
Yeah, I like those Gerber wire strippers. Those, those are good. I'll try to put a link in the description below where I make a small commission on anything working through the links. Ooh, getting thirsty. Get another bottle of water. Or no, wear a sunblock and drink lots of water. Tough conditions. Compressor. My other unit reach temperature. So now it's a little quieter. It's nice. You see the coil um, isn't very dirty, but it's a little dirty right on this right side. Kind of funny it did it's not getting evenly dirty it's getting more dirty on that side i have a leak somewhere and it gives me the suspicion that maybe the it's over there good. right there behind the controls uh, because the, the dirt's clean and it's maybe it's clinging to something you know if that was moisture or wet from a refrigerant leak then more dirt could actually cling to the oil left behind it's just a theory. It should start dropping behind that mountain. That'll help. Right now, it's just smoking and blazing out. <laughs> and once it, once it drops a little more, all of a sudden the temperature will drop quite a bit. Nice palm springs. Nice day. All things considered, nice day. It's been a crazy day. For a crazy week. I broke my phone last Friday, and so that made for a crazy week. I don't know if they did do that. You know, where all of a sudden all your contacts and everything that you had was gone if you hadn't saved it. Crazy. And I tried a new phone, but I ended up going with a different phone. So. Comparison videos on the phones. Hopefully, Pretty interesting. Sometimes when the thermal switch comes back together, you he you'll hear a little bit of a click. You don't always hear it. Sometimes it'll give a little click. Not always though. Interesting, and then it tells you 5.85 miles to walk. Again, I don't know. I don't know how accurate that is because I actually looked at it an hour or so ago, and it was at that same number. So I don't know. I don't know. But this is the first day I've tried it. 13,931 steps. You know. As the distance 5.85 miles and I only burned 500 calories which I'm pretty sure I ate more than that even though I didn't eat much <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess that's why people have to use the bathroom <laughs> I don't know TMI I guess too much information all right let's see where we're at it's 626 now so again, I'm going to go ahead and plug it and, and uh, try again. I'll pull the disconnect. Reconnect our wiring. Redischarge the capacitor first. 
again that capacitor gets recharged so and then I can connect my red run wire and then the yellow start wire Compressor having trouble to start. No, I'm just hearing a vibration here. <laughs> All right. Oh. Okay. Ooh, the sun dropped. Look, what a difference. It just, the temperature just dropped by maybe five, ten degrees. All right. That'll help. I'll plug it in. Here goes. We'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the mix. the compressor. You hear it? It's trying to start and it's not starting. Yikes, got that one going and now this one's down. Probably a good thing I'm here. <laughs> oh my gosh. You hear it? Sound of the compressor trying to start. We're gonna have to pull it and check it. nice and cold still. It's not cold back here, but, you know. Accumulator is cold to about here. As long as we stay, you know, cold to here, we're okay. And it's getting a little colder here kind of show you that temperature difference. This isn't a very accurate way to do it, obviously. I mean, right here, 109. <laughs> That's just weird. I guess it's just not very accurate way. 81 over there, 75, here we go. 75, tracing it, and then across, 98, 101. You see that going down the accumulator at the bottom is where it's cooler. Just kind of exploring the temperature. And this is a little trickier. Looks like. Yeah. It's getting warmer. Uh oh. We're like just a little low on Freon. Ay, ay, ay. Let me go see if this other unit started. I may need to go get my Freon anyway, and I'll need to get another capacitor. Oh, it started nice and cold. I'm still gonna check that capacitor. It did start though. And that's the sound of a unit that's trying to start, and I've noticed that my units need a hard start kit. They benefit from it. So I'm gonna pull this and we're going to see if it has a hard start kit for one and then I can check the, the, uh, the deal. We can do the live test, 2650 test. Yeah, no hard start yet. Look, and my units definitely just benefit and it looks like a bigger capacitor. I think that's a 45 slash 5. Hate how they turn these where you can't read them. Yeah, 
Uh, I don't want to pull it either because gotta loosen it a bit more. Just silly how they do this. Oh, I can almost see it. Can you see it? 440. Forty slash five. So yeah, it is forty slash five. Probably gonna need to change that one and add a hard start kit. The line is nice and cold, so our charge is really good there. Coming back to this one. Yeah, we're we're just lukewarm. It's running, but so I'm gonna need Freon. Yeah, probably gonna have to get a, a die kit and check for a die uh, on another day. Gotta gotta get it running for now. Get to it. All right, so I need a 40 slash five and my refrigerant gauges and get it going. And a hard start kit. I wish I had the hard start kit. So. Alright, what a difference it makes when it drops behind. Alright, just remembered I can do the live test here on the, the uh, amp draw. Line amps times 2650 divided by the uh, voltage. So the line amps on the start wire, 1.66. Voltage on the start wire. and 83 steps. So, so. Travel 108 degrees. Alright, uh, well, it's definitely low on Freon. Um, it's not, you know, catastrophically kind of low, but it's not going to be good for it to not be charged tonight, so I'm going to put it done. Get some gloves on here to prevent frostbite. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about getting this one perfect, perfect. I need to come back and test it and find the leak because it's happened before. It's been, it's been a long time. I don't remember how long. But I want to find that leak. Uh, these Goodmans, uh, they're notorious. I've seen them leak behind here, behind the panel. Uh, because when they get moved, sometimes they get locked which isn't good. Yeah. Don't know for sure if that's where this leak is. But, anyway. Alright, we're going to make sure our gauges are, are all off, and they are. Make sure everything's good here. The low side. Actually going to hook up the canister of free on first. Jolly green jug. There he is. Alright. That. Let's see if I can get you that. I'm going to turn it upside down. Try to get you a better view. I don't know if that's a little bit here or not. Find out later. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to turn on the Freon. And. Yeah. 
first uh, line there, and then hook up the low side. Cold to the touch now, but you know it's it's cycling through the refrigerant cycling through. So we're not real low, maybe a pound, pound and a half. Let me see here. The leak is a lot of time at the Schrader Schrader valves, but I don't see any signs of leaking on this one. We're at like 40, which is not real bad. I guess I um, was debating whether to check the high side or just... It's really hard. The cap is, seems tight there. Maybe tighter than I want it to be. That's good. Okay. Well, good rule of thumb is ambient plus 30 degrees. I wasn't going to worry about superheat, but since we're close, that's why you want the gloves. You see how much it shot out there. Definitely low on the high side. The valve is might be trying to change this red hose in this valve. Kind of funny. Alright. Anyway, so we're at like one. 115 on the high side. We haven't added any refrigerant yet. I can feel it through the gloves, but you know, I like to wear two pairs of these. You know, discharge, not discharge, perch. Okay, and we're at 115 now. Ambient temperature 108. So we're gonna. Just gonna double check that temperature. Refresh my temperature setting. 104. Okay. So I'm in plus 30 would be 134. So we're low, but we need that. So here it goes. Man, I don't I don't like this high side. side hose. I could hear a really high pitched whine coming from the fitting. I don't know if it showed up so good on it's camera. Uh, but I hear a hissing sound. I don't know if you can hear it. I'm going to replace that hose, but uh, for now I'm going to disconnect it and then I'm just going to charge to the low side by feel. I'm just going to disconnect that and I just got it on there too, but I just don't like it. I'm afraid that it's going to blast out. There we go. Okay. So I can charge just from the low side. Not sure why it's doing that. But. I guess the end of the Schrader valve is mushroomed, and so it's not getting a good seal. It's not able to close off the Schrader valve uh, properly. 
So it may not have a bad hose, it may actually be the Schrader valve port itself has been mushroomed. It's the most likely case. It's possible I need a new hose or a new valve anyway. Okay, um, so I'm going to put the cap back on the high side. And then I'm going to go ahead and start charging. Making sure the O-ring's in there. Everything's purged. I'm just going to charge by feel so it's cold all the way across both sides. It flashes nice and cold. We're not, you know, again, we're not real low. Um, ambient would have been 134. Ambient so temperature of 104 plus 30. We're, we're low, you know, for a total we're probably about a pound and a half. Charging up. So you can see the little unit next to this unit. That one was actually a 10 sear for a long time. That was the requirement in California was to use 10 sear units. Now uh, the bigger one is a 13 sear, and that was the further requirement for more recent years. Now it's actually required in California to use a 14 sear unit when you're replacing units. And uh, you, mostly you happen to use the refrigerant R410A to get to the 14 sear units. There are some dry 407C units uh, that satisfy the 14 sear units, but it's much less common. Much less common. Uh, I am trying to avoid the R410A system because it uses much higher pressures uh, and has its own complications to it and may eventually be phased out as well but uh, just some things to be aware of and it may not be phased out it may last a long time who knows it's all the industry is in a state of change and this is what happens I really like R22 still like R22 I'm trying to hold out with it as long as I can we'll see how it goes uh, in the industry eventually maybe get, get so expensive that uh, you'll have to phase it out. Right now a can of uh, R22 uh, the previous year was going for about 711 bucks so it's pretty expensive. Okay, Let's go ahead take a look. It's getting colder. It's not cold all the way. up this one and then I'll take care of the other one. Well, I won't finish it. I'll, I'll charge it, then I'll turn it off, and then I'll check the other one, and then I'll verify everything's still nice and chilly. It's starting to get better across the, the deal. I would have liked to, uh, 75, jumping across 75, so now it's more equal across. I would have liked to charge with the high side and verify that, that thing was messed up. And I'm running into that a lot, you know, places where the Schrader valve was tightened on too tight and it winds up messing up the gauges, messing up the Schrader valves. looking in there but I'll have to just replace this the hose you can get ends that connect on these I haven't had much luck with them I've found I've wound up having to replace the hose uh, is what it is
getting nice and chilly now. That's good, you know, the refrigerant acts to keep the compressor cool and it also helps move the oil a little bit and that's why sometimes you'll see oil residue left behind with the refrigerant. You can see how I got it wet here but it's got like an oily finish to it. So yeah, this unit's a candidate for the dye. Nice and cold now. Go ahead and turn this off and take a look at where we're at. 49. I usually like to see this at 40 on the low side, but that it wasn't cold enough for this one. Um, and definitely the high side is more accurate. When we did have this hooked up, it was too low. So sometimes it takes time for it to shift over from the low side to the high side too. This needle will really slowly start to go and adjust and so uh, you know the high side is more accurate. Feels pretty good there. Anymore. And then I think I'll leave that. That's a fall. And then I go get that other unit for 45. Here's the 45, and I have a hard start kit. Here, all right. Go get it. And bring my meter. Uh oh. Okay. There's our new one. This is our old one. See, this is why it's a good idea to. Mark them somehow. I'm gonna tear the lid off so I don't do that. Stuff it like a little flag in there. All right now, that one's a junker. This is our good one. All right, here we go to this unit. Still running. It's nice and chilly. Okay. But you heard the sound of the unit when it's not running how it sounds when the compressor's not starting and it's trying to start. And it could indi indicate a weak capacitor. It also could just need a hard start get. My units benefit from a hard start get. The, the compressor winds up starting much easier. And over time, my, in my opinion, that, that initial start, that initial torque takes, takes its toll. So I'm gonna go ahead and discharge the capacitor on this one. And uh, this one's for you, my friend. All right. There we go. All right. Pull the disconnect. Okay. And we'll discharge the capacitor. And that capacitor holds a charge. Even after the power is disconnected, so we'll bridge the leads. Okay. Here's the commons. Start. Sorry for the poor camera positioning on this one. You guys have seen me do this a lot of times, yeah, though. I still felt it was valuable enough to show in, in the video. Uh, is the test it may not clear. be bad, but my thought it was most likely that the end is how it was just sitting there trying to start. Okay, home and home, or actually I'm not sure. <laughs> I think that might have been common and fan, but it's 3.9 and that's weak. And then here's common and home. And that's 14.36 and that's weak. So yep, we got a weak capacitor. There's a right call to change this puppy out. Okay, um, we're definitely going to need to shift this deal over, which I believe is going to be the second to the last hole. Let's see if I can get you guys to get you. Okay. Let's 
one I, I find usually goes in the second to last one. For this capacitor. Position it so we can read it. This one, Herm is here, fan is here, so the fan's the brown one. Before I do that, I can show you the reading on the capacitor now on the microfarad test. Let's see, common and fan. This is a 40 slash 5, and that's good. And then common and Herm. Forty point six. All right. Okay. And there is definitely debate about the hard start kits, but it's totally my opinion and my experience that they benefit and that they do a lot better with a hard start kit, even installed right from the get go. With that brand new unit that the compressor won't start, and then I add the hard start kit. And fine so it's been my experience all right we're in and now our hard start kit one leaf goes to common one leaf goes to herm okay and I like to use the jumpered one for common Um, I kind of, on these, when I'm putting terminals on, I like to leave the spaded portion out because it's easier to remove it in the future. If you put it this way, it's, it's much harder to get a screwdriver under there. This way it just seems to have a little more body on that front edge. It makes it easier in the future to remove them. This is a little quick tech tip. That's how I like to do it. Not, somebody may have different recommendations, but to me, that would be my tech tip on making life easier for the next tech in the future, because you see how you can really get the screwdriver under there so much easier than, than the other little thin portion. So that's my opinion there. All right, we're ready to run. And the compressor, it's been about five minutes, so which is good. It's allowed to if it was faster, if I was too fast, I might want to wait until it's had five minutes for the pressures to equalize. We don't want the compressor to try to start in an unequalized state. Then it might blow a fuse, might trip the breaker. Anyway, we're ready to see how we start. Yeah, new capacitor. Come back and check our unit here. We're nice and cold. All right. Ready to get off the drawer. Okay. Put my cover back on. And that'll be that. I didn't like how when I plugged the disconnect in, I kind of misconnected it. I, you know, sometimes if that happens, sometimes I'll just wait another five minutes before. Um, but, you know, in a perfect world, I like I often say, we don't live in a perfect world.
Alright. Air conditioner back in the mix. Now it'll run and start much easier. It's nice and cold. It's like some old trash up here left up here. I'm going to get rid of this up here. Alright. Just make things better as you can, a little bit at a time. Do what you can. Alright. Back to the other, the other one that was low. Okay, now I can back up my gauges. Um, if you remember, I did hook up the liquid line. So we've got liquid refrigerant trapped in that hose, so I'm going to want to recover that. Um, our line is nice and cold. So I'll turn off the tank. Connect the hose. And I've got quick connect fittings, so you only want to do this procedure if you have quick connect open that fitting side line or ball valve. Now it may have off. leaked a little bit, and that's why I disconnected it. Remember how I was saying I could hear uh, you know gas escaping. Um, but that would have been similar to purging it. So if we don't have air in the line, it would have purged the, the air. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the high side line. And then I'm going to open the low side line a little bit and bring some of that over and then bring it back and then bring it over bring it back and you can hear it drink up buddy all right we're just throttling in little by little until we're all done until our pressures are equalized we're good now I can disconnect my low side, put my cap on, go ahead and on the compressor I can take an amp draw reading on the, I want to take one wire, get the black common wire. Seven point six, seven point five. 7.6 amps. Good. All right. It's not that old of a unit. You can see the data plate, the, the, uh, not the data plate, but this wiring diagram on the back's already starting to come apart. All right. So now we can disconnect our low side. A lot of that diagram coming apart is probably because how much this unit had overheated. It's pretty hot in there. On top of the heat that already exists in my area. Okay. Got our shader valve cap. Make sure it's got the O-ring. Okay. Got the leak in there. And we're just finger tightening those caps. Okay. This wiring's hanging down a little bit below the wheel. Move that out of the way. Okay, so we don't want to leave any refrigerant trapped in our hoses. So I'm going to go ahead and release that. We've already taken the hot side over, so it's our key minimus release, and then I go ahead and restore our line on the back here, keeps dirt and stuff from getting in there. That holder is starting to come loose here on this uh, wheel here. Yeah, tighten that up another time. Our okay, my camera died pretty much just in time. Uh, here's my other camera. But uh, I'm 
you get out of these gloves, it gets pretty scary. Ah. <laughs> all right, we're all set there. Nice and cold. Everything's doing what it should. Amp draw was good. One final thing is going to be put this cover back on. Keep any rain and stuff from getting in there. There's that one. This one seems a little funny too. Alright. Make things a little better. Alright. Somebody else is trash. So I checked that step app at the end of the day, Friday, and it said I walked 16,778 steps, and that was a distance of 7.05 miles, burned a total of 607 nice. calories. Pretty crazy. Palm Springs. Good portion of that was with my tool bag on, and backpack. Deal. Yeah, I had another air conditioner go down right after the eclipse. You might check out that video. So be on the lookout for more Kung Fu maintenance coming soon.